When I first started playing guitar, I remember doing homework on arpeggios and being generally confused on the entire topic. Um, for a long time, for an embarrassingly long time, I believe that uh, arpeggios were just this. And that's it. There was no other, no other definition of arpeggio other than sweeping up and down like that. Um, so I want to clear up a little confusion on what an arpeggio is and what we can do with them as a guitar player besides just sweeping them, which is fun, um, but it's not always that uh, practical. So uh, long story short, an arpeggio are just, is just the notes of a chord played one at a time. So this is an A major chord. I'm playing a bar chord on the fifth fret. That's the chord. The arpeggio is this. Just the notes going up one at a time. This is also the A major arpeggio. If I do this, that's an extra C sharp in there that we don't normally play when we're playing the bar chord. And a high C sharp on top. So this is an arpeggio shape I want to start with because I think it's pretty simple to practice uh, and it's movable. So right now we're in A. If I move it up to A sharp, I'm all of a sudden playing the notes of an A sharp major chord. If I move it to B, I'm all of a sudden playing the notes of a B major chord and so on. Uh, now, the entire uh, shape is good to know. You want to be practicing the entire shape. But for me personally, when I'm playing solos, it's very rare that I end up playing an entire uh, arpeggio shape. I usually end up using little tiny bits of it. Um, so what I mean by that is if I look at just the highest notes of this arpeggio right here, up here on the ninth fret and the fifth fret and the fifth fret and then the sixth fret right here, these notes right here are the notes I'm probably going to be using if I'm in the middle of a solo over an A major chord probably not going to be down here. I'm probably just going to focus on these high notes to help outline line that chord. Um, and then likewise, I want to show you this uh, B minor arpeggio. We're going to start on the seventh fret. This would be a B minor chord right here. And the arpeggio shape that we want to practice goes like this. These are sweepable shapes too, if you want to practice doing this, the sweeping up and down. But really what I want you to focus on is just the high notes here. Maybe down to the fourth string. All right, we'll, we'll work on all the notes of the arpeggio from the fourth string and on like that. And already you can hear the chord kind of being formed, the chord progression being formed, just by me playing these two shapes back and forth like that. Uh, you can actually hear the A major chord and the B minor chord, even though I'm not playing chords. I'm just playing arpeggios. So uh, the first application of arpeggios. Um, I think the easiest one is to just play the arpeggio over the chord. The chord progression we're jamming along to, uh, it goes A major to B minor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play a little bit of my A major shape, and I think I'll just do these three strings right here. Like that. And then for B minor, I'll do the same thing. I'll go over to my B minor shape, and I'll just play these three strings of the B minor shape. Now, this will be less of a guitar solo and more of a guitar line. Uh, I want to back up the rhythm guitar. I don't want to be doing some flashy solo. I just kind of want to slip in there and, and be part of the background music without being uh, you know, out front and center. And arpeggios are great for that. Um, if you're picking through them one at a time like that, um, or even skipping them around, uh, you can get some really nice uh, layers in the middle of a jam. So this will be less of a solo and more of like an addition to a jam track. Um, and I want you to hear what that sounds like. Once again, I'm just doing the top three notes of an A major arpeggio and top three notes of a B minor arpeggio. And I guess uh, it's not the very highest notes. The shape I showed you includes this note. So I am skipping out that note on A major and I'm just doing these three notes. And then for B minor, I'm skipping out on the high note and I'm just doing these three notes. All right, let's hear what that sounds like. One, two, three, four. So it sounds pretty nice. I mean, it's not anything uh, special. I mean, nobody's going to, you know, jump out of their seats because of that. But it works perfectly. And I mean, it should obviously work perfectly. You're literally playing the notes of the chord in the background. Um, it's really worth mentioning that all of your arpeggios come from chords. So the stronger your chord theory is, the stronger your, your understanding of chords on the fretboard and how to get around chord inversions, then obviously the stronger your arpeggios are going to be because they're all built off of that. So uh, I would advise if you're trying to get into arpeggios, really start with chords. Go get all your chord theory worked out first. And then working on arpeggios is going to be infinitely easier because you already understand, you know, how they're built and the structure of them all. So the next thing I want to talk about is still using the same shapes, but uh, what I like to do is once I have something that's movable, I like to practice little things that get moved all around the neck whenever I'm in a different key or in a different chord shape. For example, the highest three notes of this arpeggio right here, nine, five, and five from my A major. That is a really easy little pattern to get fast at. If I do a pull off with an upstroke, and then if I do a downstroke on the second string like that. I can play those as triplets or eighth notes or sixteenth notes, and I can get a lot of speed out of it that, that way, and it'll match the chord perfectly. That move is translatable to my second arpeggio, B minor. 
So I can do the same move, the pull off here to that note, and then come down to my first finger. And I've talked about these moves in other videos, but now we're applying them to arpeggios instead of scales, just to make sure it matches our chord even better. So, uh, for this next little jam, I'm just going to show you what it sounds like to play uh, an arpeggio with this little trick over the A chord, and then for the B minor chord, the same little thing right there. And I'll try it in a few different rhythmic cycles. We'll try like eighth notes, triplets, and maybe sixteenth notes if I can pull it off, and we'll hear what that sounds like. One, two, three. Now triplets. Alright, so I'm not going to try doing 16th notes there, that's just not going to happen, uh, but you can hear uh, how nice that sounds as, as far as like, uh, you know, fitting into the chord and having something fast to up your sleeve ready to play. Definitely don't do it for the whole solo, it sounds completely annoying if you're just going to do that all day, um, but definitely in little bits and pieces, it's very practical. Uh, and then the last thing I want to show you here is connecting these arpeggio shapes to scale shapes that you've already practiced. Um, what I'm trying to do is find out, if I'm in the key of A major, which I am in this jam track, I'm trying to think, where is the rest of the scale? Because I don't want to just hang out on the arpeggio, that's boring, it sounds very bland if all you're doing is outlining the chord. The real joy from a solo comes from uh, resting on those notes of the arpeggio that sound good and stable, and then venturing out and going to some weird, you know, colorful notes, then coming back to those notes that sit really well and, uh, you know, are comfortable to, to hang out on. So if you're just hanging out on those comfort zones the entire time, there's just no interest in your solos. So that's why it's important to know the rest of the scale and how it fits in to the arpeggio shape that you're using. So, the shape that I'm using is uh, a Locrian shape, uh, well, I think of it as a Locrian shape, three notes per string, and it looks like this. Alright, and the reason I like that shape is because if I'm playing my arpeggio like this, up to the pinky, then I can just come down my scale shape like that, and I basically have this beautiful little transition up the arpeggio and down uh, my scale. I can do the same thing here with uh, a major shape. If I play my B minor uh, arpeggio right here, uh, I'm going to use this shape to complete my A major scale. And this is actually a very common A major shape. Uh, it's a three notes per string A major shape. But once again, it connects very well into my B minor arpeggio. So what I'll be trying to do this time is I'll be trying to play up arpeggios and coming down the scale. Going up the arpeggio and down the scale. You could obviously do this in reverse, come down the arpeggio and up the scale, down the arpeggio and up the scale. But uh, this is about as simple as it gets as far as combining these things together. Um, I'm just starting with an arpeggio, down the scale. Starting with an arpeggio, down the scale. It'll sound really good, and I think it's a nice little trick you can start adding into your solos as soon as you start learning arpeggio shapes. So let's take a listen to that. One, two, three. I mean, uh, everything's going to work just perfectly uh, as I'm coming up the arpeggio, and it's going to sound sweet and right in tune, and then I can kind of do anything I want, uh, you know, down the scale. But one thing I would recommend, now that we're kind of, uh, you know, familiar with the notes of the chord being played in the background, I would advise if you're going to hang out on a note, and if you're going to let something ring out for a substantial period of time, make it one of those notes in the arpeggio. It's very easy to start sounding uh, bad, even if you're in the scale, and if you're in the right shape, and you're using the right arpeggios. If you're uh, hanging out on notes that aren't part of the chord, you can get into a little trouble that way. So uh, you get a lot of uh, benefit from practicing these arpeggios. Not only do they sound good, not only are they better for strengthening your theory and moving around the fretboard, but uh, you're just going to be more familiar with um, the notes that are safe, you know, the notes that you can really uh, start on and end on. Uh, even small phrases, it makes a big difference if you're starting and ending on the right phrase, the right note. Uh, your phrase will just sound better. And it takes a long time to, uh, to apply these techniques, but you got to start somewhere, and uh, I hope this is a good starting point for you. So thank you for watching.